Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Petroleum Refinery Products, Characteristics and Processes. In the previous lecture, we started discussing on petroleum industry and then we had a discussion to make a connection between chemical engineering and then importance of chemical engineering in petroleum refineries, etc. Then we started discussing a few basic concepts of petroleum uh, crudes, production of petroleum crudes, composition of petroleum crudes, etc. Right? So, before going into the today's lecture, we will have a recapitulation of what we have discussed in previous lecture. Okay? We started discussing on petroleum industry, then where we have found that it ranks very high uh, both uh, productivity wise and then profit wise as well, economics point of view also it ranks very high amongst all uh, chemical industries. Right? Then we started discussing about uh, petroleum crude, so its appearance, how it appear naturally because petroleum industry or production of petroleum crude whatever is there that comes under natural product industry because whatever the crude petroleum crude is there that forms naturally. This comes because of the you know anaerobic conditions existing underneath the earth where you have the organic matter marine waste right so what will happen selective bacteria will attack uh, these matters these matters what they consist they consist of you know uh, proteins and carbohydrates in general so, when this bacteria under oxygen or air deficiency conditions attacks these proteins and carbohydrates of organic uh, matter or marine deposits, then they produce fats. These fats would accumulate to form crudes, petroleum crudes that is what we found and then we started looking at the on processing of crude which refining we may call. So, then what kind of products we may get? We may get you know LPG, we may get the petrol spirits, we may get the diesel, we may get kerosene, we may also get you know waxes and then several other products as well. So, that means the spectrum of products is very wide, especially in terms of carbon number. Number of carbons are present in these components if you see, you have C1 to C40 and even higher ones also in the crude. So, Actually, this LPG you get C3, C4, and then petrol you get C5 to C17, etc. Uh, diesel also C5 to C17, etc. Things would be there, but in waxes C18 to C40, etc. These kind of semi solids, etc. may be there, right? Whatever the crude is having, if you see its chemical composition, then you can find out that you know this spectrum of uh, chemical composition would also be white from the raw material point of view. Actually crude whatever is there that you can take it as a kind of a uh, inventory of a raw materials for several petrochemicals productions etc. So, these raw materials that spectrum if you see it is having open chain aliphatic components, aliphatic compounds cyclic or aromatic compounds are also there, then asphalts etc are also there, some inorganic salts there, then organo 
metallic components are also there. So, so much of wide range of organic chemicals are present. So, then we have seen in detail what are they comprise of let us say open chain aliphatics, we have in paraffins, isoparaffins and the cyclic aromatic uh, compounds. We have uh, simple uh, cyclics as well as the aromatics, then poly aromatic hydrocarbons, etc. Then hetero atom containing uh, aromatic components, etc. Those things, there is some of the structures, etc. Also, we have seen. Right? Then finally, we concluded the lecture with the production of crude. Production of crude is very important one because the how effectively are you taking out all the crude depending on that one your profit will depend. Right? If you are not able to take all crude efficiently then you may not get much profit out of it because the extraction of the crude or production of the crude itself involves lot of scientific technology to get properly. So, here we did not get into the details because it is not part of the course so then but some basics we have seen like you know reserves what do you mean by reserves then what are the exploration techniques are available then what are the uh, production techniques are there those things we have seen and then concluded our lecture. Okay? Now today we start with petroleum refinery products. What do you mean by petroleum refinery products? That means you take a crude, petroleum crude depending on its nature whether it is paraffin based uh, crude or naphthene based crude or intermediate based crude accordingly your products would be forming. Right? So, if it is uh, paraffin uh, based uh, crude then more of the petrol diesel kind of products you may get. If you have the naphthene based crude then more of the lubricants, waxes etc. you may get or gas oils etc. you may get. Okay? So, that how are you getting? You are getting by doing some kind of refinery process. Refinery process crudely if you wanted to say some kind of chemical conversion followed by the separation and then finishing. So, crudely that way we can see the refinery of a petroleum crude. We are going to discuss in detail about uh, different types of you know uh, refinery products, their production process using the flow chart, engineering problems etc. in the subsequent chapters of the course anyway. But for the time being we are enlisting let us say uh, you have a particular petroleum crude and then you are applying refinery uh, process or you are doing the refining of such crude. So, then what kind of uh, products you may get, what is the spectrum of uh, products that you can get and then what are the reactions involved in general, what are the physical chemical changes are involved those things we are going to discuss in this particular lecture. Okay? Crude petroleum must be separated into numerous products to achieve maximum economic uh, return that is very essential because by now already we understood that crude petroleum or petroleum crude is a raw material not only for different types of petrochemicals but also different types of synthetic chemicals as well. Synthetic chemical industries are also depending on that one. So, then how effectively are you separating crude into different fractions of products that is going to dictate the economics of your plant. Okay? A portion of separation takes place in the oil fields itself. So, when you do the exploration and then production, when you find reserves by some kind of exploration methods and then you are confirmed that when you apply the production method, you can find quantum of crude which is going to be fruitful or you know profitable for you because what you are going to invest lot of money in the exploration as well as the extraction of a or you know production of a crude from the underneath of the earth surface. Okay? So, lot of money is involved. So, then if enough quantum of crude is there then only you can go forward for the production of the crude otherwise you cannot. So, let us assume that you found enough quantum of the crude and then you start doing the production. So, during the production process itself some of the gases, some of the gases like natural gas etc are you know collected during the uh, production in the oil fields itself. Some amount of petrols etc also recovered in the oil fields itself. So, uh, what do you mean by petrols? Petrol may be uh, natural petrol as well as the petrol spirit or motor spirit that we use. So, that depends on the, the octane number etc. So, low octane or the low grade petrol you can get during the crude production in the field itself. Right? So, those things we are going to see now. So, a portion of separation takes place in the oil fields where natural gas CH4 
with some impurities if at all may be there obviously they will be there because you are doing it on field right so they will be purified anyway later on lpg you get and then natural petrol you get which is low grade petrol which may be containing impurities like sulfur etc right so these are removed before remainder of crude is put into the pipelines or tankers for shipment to the refineries so in the oil fields itself you recover them or uh, separated them and then remainder of the crude only you are sending through pipelines or tankers for shipment or refineries basically what does it mean by in the next slide we are going to see so uh, when you do the refinery process of petroleum then you get the gas fractions and then lighter ends then intermediate ends then heavy ends and then residues these kind of you know fractions you may get by doing the refinery process that with flow chart we are going to discuss in the next slide it's anyway so out of these things most of the gas fractions and lighter ends are recovered at the oil fields themselves and then some amount of intermediates are also recovered remaining heavy ends residues with some amount of intermediates only are being transported through pipelines or tankers okay flow sheet is shown uh, next slide where it shows the operations to produce all of the products from a typical refinery refinery also depends right you know whether it is primary refinery or intermediate refinery or complex refinery what does it mean by primary intermediate and then complex refinery that based on the duty that is taking or how much duty how much extra work is involved based on that one refineries are being characterized so that is also we are going to see so the flow chart that we are going to see in the next slide is an example of a complex refinery so it will show all the operations that are required to produce all of the products from a typical refinery a suitable classification of all products is listed below as i already written here gas fractions light ends intermediates heavy distillates and residues okay so there would be some by products also how this classification is done what do you mean by gas fraction so then gas fractions are you know highly volatile and then you can easily get light ends you know they are coming from the you know liquid kind of products but they are vo more volatile uh, compared to the other ones then intermediates are slightly less volatile compared to the light ends whereas the heavy distillates are the low volatiles volatility is the important uh, factor in uh, refinery process because by distillation operations we are going to separate these fractions from the crude when you take a crude and do the proper distillation atmospheric distillation then different fractions you can get gas fractions you may get from the top highly volatile liquids whatever are there you get from the top as vapors and then they would be condensed to get as light ends and then intermediate distillates which are uh, less volatile compared to the light ends they would also be collected from the intermediate trays then heavy distillates uh, would be collected not from the bottom but uh, few trays above from the bottom they will be collected because these are low volatiles uh, residues are the lowest volatility having fractions so based on the volatility of the uh, mixture that whatever is there that fraction that you are uh, getting so in that order they are presented here this is the lowest volatile and then this is the highest volatile of amongst the liquids okay residues are also like you know semi solid waxy kind of things as we have seen and there are also possibilities of some by products like you know ammonia because hydrogen you are getting so you react with the nitrogen to get the ammonia right some fertilizers also because you are getting naphtha etc if you do the cracking of the naphtha then you can get the fertilizers etc okay then something like you know detergents also you may get or the source for the detergents you may get so that you can do the required reaction with h2so4 naoh etc to get the detergents in one of the previous lectures we have seen manufacturing of the detergents now this is the flow chart and this is an example of complex refinery and it is presented in the form of block diagram only because we are not giving any engineering parameters like temperature pressure flow rate etc those things we are not providing so we are presenting the operations also in simple blocks okay 
So, it is a block diagram type flow chart. Okay? So, the crude oil, petroleum crude or whatever you get from the petroleum production fields, then that would be having several types of salts and water etc. So, you have to do certain kind of pre-treatment to remove water and salts. After removing water and salts, you can do atmospheric distillation, you can do atmospheric distillation. Actually distillation what we have already uh, seen in one of the previous lectures. We have a column right, so in that column several trays are there, perforated trays are there. Number of trays you know that depends on the design calculations of operation that you are going to do. So, in this column number of trays you have to calculate those are the design calculations that we are not going to see now. And then to which tray you have to give the feed, now feed here is the crude whatever the pre-treated crude is the feed. Then whatever the high volatiles gases etc and then high volatile liquid components etc you can get from the top whereas the lowest volatility having components may be collected as bottoms from the bottom. But depending on the uh, volatility in between also you can have different uh, you know collections right, you can have different intermediate uh, collections as well. So, that depends on the volatility because that crude that is you are having it is not having one or two components or three four components as you might have studied in the mass transfer, it is having hundreds of components actually because we understand that C1 to C40 range organics are there in this crude some inorganics also there, right? some uh, metallic components are also there. right? So, different fractions are possible and then how effectively are you taking? So, let us say light ends whatever is there, here also you can get intermediate ends you can get from the here high ends and then residues you can get from the bottom something like that. But from which tray you need to collect the light ends, intermediate ends and then heavy ends etc. These things depends on your calculation, design calculations. So, design of uh, you know distillation column for the cracking of the crude is very complex process, much more difficult than the distillation column design that you might have learned in your mass transfer course. Because in your mass transfer course you might have learned distillation column designing based on the two or three components mixture only. Right, but now here hundreds of components are there and then more than 5-6 uh, fractions you are collecting as product. Whereas in your UG course mass transfer course you might be having only one feed tray and then you may be getting only two product streams top and bottom. Now here in different product streams are there. So from which tray remaining of the product stream should be collected all that uh, very important design calculation of a petroleum refinery engineering that is not part of this course so that we are not going into the details. Right? So, all this separation here in the distillation column is based on the relative volatility. This is very much essential not only for the distillation but some other kind of operations also like absorption etc. So, let us say after doing the pre-treatment if you do the atmospheric distillation of crude oil then you can get different fractions. One fraction is the light gas fraction, another one is the light ends, another one is the intermediates, another one is like you know heavy ends and then residues like this. Okay? So, now these are the fractions you are getting from different trays of your distillation column. After getting them there are wide number of processes are there to get the wide spectrum of products as shown here and then in between within the flow chart as well. So, that we are going to discuss now. Let us say whatever the light gas uh, there you primarily recover the methane and ethane and then use it as a fuel or synthesis gas and in the light gas actually C1 to C4 are having the gaseous form that we already understood in previous class. right? C3, C4 saturates, we are not calling unsaturates, saturates only that means propane and then butane, normal butane as well as the isobutane whatever are there, you can collect them as a LPG fuel or synthesis gas purpose. Earlier it was used only for the LPG fuel but nowadays it is being used for the synthesis gas production as well. right? So, light gas may also contain some amount of uh, uh, unsaturates 
as we have discussed unsaturates like uh, ethylene, propylene, etc. are very small quantities they are present in the uh, crude. So, only small fractions of a propylene and butylene you may get, negligible fraction probably. So, what you can do? You can take these things and then mix with this normal butane. This normal butane also you can do the isomerization to get the butane isomers and then this isomers of the butane and then propylene, butylene are uh, taken to catalytic polymerization. When you do the catalytic polymerization of these components, you may get light polymers having C6 to C9 range as well as the propylene tetramer like C12 range something like that. This propylene tetramer may be used as a base to get the detergents after reacting with H2SO4 and appropriately using NaOH. Then what you get? Sulfonated or sulfated detergents or both sulfonated and sulfated detergents you may get. This process we have already discussed in one of the previous lecture. Right? So, whereas the light polymers C6 to C9 whatever are there, they would be mixed with the normal petrol after or the low grade petrol after removing the sulphur etc. Then when you mix this one with this light polymers, so you can have you know petrol or motor spirits etc. Here you may also be adding some kind of blendings etc. That is a different thing. Right? So, that is what. So, this is about the uh, fraction. So, these uh, isomers whatever are there and then propylene, butylene etc. whatever are there, they can also be undergoing alkylation if you want. That depends on your product. If you do the alkylation, alkylation, hydrodealkylation, polymerization, pyrolysis etc. These kind of processes are involved in the refinery. Those things we are discussing tomorrow with appropriate flow chart separately. So, we are not going into the details of individual process. We are going in the discussion of the block diagram of a, you know refinery process. So, when you do the alkylation then you can get the butane from this uh, propylene, butylene and then uh, butane isomers etc. So, the normal butane you can mix with the LPG fuel stream and then use it for the LPG purpose or you can do synthesis gas production also. From the alkylation you may also get isoactane that will also be mixed with the uh, gasoline and then petrol low grade petrol etc. to get the petrol or motor spirits. Right? That is about the gases fractions. Now, the second fraction is that you know light ends. In the light ends you may have the petrol and then solvent naphtha. So, let us take the petrol stream, so which is having the low grade uh, petrol because it is having impurities like sulphur etc. And then any refinery, this stream whatever the quantity of the uh, this stream is there or yield of this stream is there that people try to maximize especially in India. Right? So, especially you know wherever the petrol requirements are more. In fact, petrol requirements are much more than the other requirements in general because of the transportation requirements. Okay? So, maximizing the yield of this stream is most important uh, duty of a design engineers when they do the designing of uh, uh, this you know distillation column for the fractionation of the petroleum crude. Let us say this petrol, low grade petrol whatever you get, so you remove the sulphur in the form of H2S uh, to H2SO4 plant they can be sent. Okay? Then after removing the sulphur if you do the catalytic reforming of a petrol, low grade petrol then you can get benzene as one product, hydrogen you may get and then high octane gasoline you can get which is nothing but the petrol that can be blended with uh, some other uh, uh, additives as per the requirement and then you can get the petrol or motor spirit. Whereas, the hydrogen you can collect and then react with nitrogen to get ammonia. Whereas, the benzene you can take and then use as a source for the manufacturing of uh, detergents because uh, benzene uh, and then benzene related aromatics are you know forming basis for the you know several of the detergents manufacturing that we have already discussed. So, that is about the uh, petrol product stream from the cracking of a petroleum crude. Okay? So, another stream product stream you get from the cracking of a petroleum crude is solvent naphtha that you can collect and then you can do the uh, reforming to get different types of products including the fertilizers etc. Okay? And then also 
you can get, uh, you can use it as a source for uh, preparation of different types of petrochemicals, wide range of petrochemicals you can uh, produce from here. Other product stream coming out uh, from this uh, fractionation of uh, petroleum crude is kerosene that you can use as a superior kerosene oil or as diesel fuels etc. for that purpose it, it can use or it can also be used for uh, uh, jet fuels nowadays. Gas oil comes under the intermediate to heavy ends because their volatilities are low. So, this fraction when you do the catalytic cracking three products you get one is the cracked petrol that you can mix with the gasoline high octane gasoline and then other additives blenders etc to get the petrol and motor spirits and then other product of catalytic cracking of gas oils will give the domestic heating oil and then third product is nothing but you know some kind of uh, gaseous components like you know uh, methane, ethane and then saturates etc. They will be mixed with uh, light gas uh, fractions and then do the processing as already discussed. Right? So, the heavy ends or residues whatever are there they are collected from the bottom and then these residues what you do you do separately vacuum distillation. So, when you do the vacuum distillation of these residues or heavy ends then what happens you will form two fractions one is the high volatiles, high volatiles out of these residues only not from the crude. So, high volatiles of the residues would be collected right and then when you collect you find you know you do the catalytic cracking of those high volatiles of the residues along with the gas oil compositions and then you get the cracked petrol domestic heating oils and then some gases right. Whereas, the low volatiles of the residues that you get after vacuum distillations are primarily propane de-asphalting. So, here asphalts you separate and then you collect. So, this one you can do the processing to get the wax etc., lubricants etc. After the asphalted oil whatever is there that you can do the uh, phenol solvent extraction and then treating with some kind of oil and then doing this uh, solvent de-waxing de by methyl ethyl ketone. MEK is nothing but methyl ethyl ketone that is nothing but CH3, CWO, CH2, CH3. This is also known as the butanone. Remember known that ON that you write for the ketones, OL all you write for the alcohols. So, this is the part of organic chemistry I assume that you already know it. Right. So, after doing this uh, de-waxing then you can get two fraction one is the lube oils another one is the wax. Wax fraction you can do the acid treating to get the paraffin wax whereas, the lube fraction you can do the treatment with the blending additives etc. to get the lubricating oils. One other uh, high end is the lubricating oil stocks that you can uh, you know mix with the low volatiles of a residues after vacuum distillation and then mix with this the asphalted oil and then you do this processing. Okay. So, this is what you know a typical refinery it is only actually you know only some of the details are only presented. If you go for the expanded much more complicated uh, details of a refinery then uh, more number of products you can get. Now, you can see the spectrum of a product very wide, very wide. So, that is the reason this crude, petroleum crude whatever is there, it is not only primary source of energy, but also it is a very much important raw material for several of synthetic organic chemicals. Okay? Now, whatever these uh, gas fractions, light ends, intermediate ends, heavy ends, residues etc. are there. So, all of those things individually we are going to discuss and then what kind of components or products you get that we are presenting in the form of text now here. Let us say gas fraction. Gaseous fractions were previously used only for fuel, but nowadays they are also used for uh, uh, synthesis gas production. 
Natural gas largely contains CH4 with some C2 as well which are separated at the oil fields itself. Okay? Whereas the light gas which consists C1 and C2 from distillation of petroleum crudes at the refinery, this is collected at the refinery when you do the fractionation or distillation whereas uh, natural gas primarily you get at the wells. Off gas from petroleum conversion operations at the refinery uh, you can have and these off gases are nothing but H2, H2S, SO2, C1, C2, etc. All of them are having some kind of a one or other kind of applications. Okay? LPG which is nothing but propane and butane but these are primarily liquefied and used for domestic fuel because these are in the gases form under the normal conditions. So, they have to be liquefied in order to store in the LPG cylinders and then they can be used for domestic fuel purpose. They are also used as a winterizing gasoline or synthesis gas purpose as well. Now, the light ends of a crude petroleum fractionation product. When you do the fractionation or distillation of a crude petroleum, the light ends you get. So, now we are going to discuss about those light ends. It includes petrol or motor spirits. Petrol is principal refinery product. Most of the chemical conversion at the refinery is aimed at maximizing the yield of various grades of petrol. This fuel as energy source for piston engines and gas turbines is formulated to meet the engine combustion requirements. So, this is very much essential. This petrol is very much essential which is also known as the motor spirit. Now, if you see the combustion characteristics of the petrol, under a high compression condition it causes violent detonation or knocking. What happen when you uh, release the petrol and then start the ignition then combustion takes place and then that combustion releases the energy that energy would be utilized for the movement of the vehicle. So, how does it happen and all that that is part of the design and then working principles of IC engines we are not going into that one. But if that process is does not take properly or premature combustion takes place when you take this air and fuel mixtures and then try to start the ignition before the uh, starting the ignition itself combustion somehow it takes place. Some cases it takes place actually. Then what happens a kind of a uncontrolled combustion takes place within the cylinder and then that releases that causes some kind of pressure waves. These pressure waves causes to move or vibrate some of the parts of the cylinder and then that leads to some kind of knocking kind of uh, sound which is clearly audible. So, this kind of premature combustion of uh, uh, fuel air mixture is very dangerous not only from the performance point of view also from the safety point of view. Right? So, the, this has to be avoided for that purpose some kind of anti-knocking agents are there. Okay? So, in an IC engine knocking means knocking type sounds due to premature combustion of air fuel mixture in the cylinder that is at high compression ratios some of the charge, charge in the sense here fuel plus air or oxygen may spontaneously ignite ahead of flame front and burn in uncontrollable manner producing high frequency pressure waves. These pressure waves force parts of engine to vibrate and produce an audible knocking, knock sound. So, that is the reason this is known as the knocking, it has to be avoided, it should not be there. Okay? So, thus following anti-knock compounds added to slow down the burning rate, these are lead tetraethyl, lead tetramethyl isoparaffins and then ring unsaturates are also used in general for this purpose. Okay? This will avoid knocking when tested on a standard SAE engine. SAE is the Society of uh, Automotive Engineers. They have the standard test for each uh, each and every aspect of the automotive engines. So, then these automotive engines whatever are there, they should uh, follow and then pass the recommendations of SAE. Then only that can come to the market. right? So, if you add these anti-knocking agents, then that will avoid knocking and then that can be clearly tested on any standard engine. 
So how do you know knocking is there or not? So octet number is a parameter defined to characterize anti-knocking, right? So octet number is a parameter defined to characterize anti-knock characteristics of a fuel though it is an arbitrary scale. Octet number is percentage of isooctane in n heptane plus isooctane mixture in the isooctane and octane, n-heptane mixture, how much percentage of iso-octane is there that is known as the octane, octane number. Let us say if you have uh, 80 percent of uh, iso-octane in uh, uh, n-heptane plus iso-octane mixture, then you can call octane number as 80. Commercial petrol blends used mainly in airplane piston engines have better knock resistance than iso-octane that is octane number even having more than 100 is also possible, right? So this is if you have only two components, but how do you calculate the octane number for a fuel which is having, you know, uh, C5 to C17 chemicals, especially saturates one, okay? Then there is a equation, octane number is 100 plus power number minus 100 by 3. So power number is nothing but the power extracted from the engine. It is some proportional uh, number or constant to power extracted from the engine. That power number minus 100 by 3 you do plus add 100 then you get the octane number for a given fuel. Other factors that are important in petrol blending are engine falling, ease of starting, warm up rate, tendency of vapor lock, evaporation losses and loss of crankcase, oil, etc. All these things are also important to check before having final petrol blending, right? So it is not that arbitrarily any uh, percentage of uh, blenders or additives you can add to the high octane gasoline and then you can say that that is your the final petrol, no. You have to see all these things are also being properly managed by the final petrol blending or petrol or motor spirit whatever is there. Now production of petrol, this is again within the light ends only, right? These numbers are given accordingly, one for the gas fractions, two for the light ends, okay? So production of petrol, so two types are there, natural petrol and refinery motor spirits. Natural petrols recovered at the oil fields by absorbing in gas or straw oil in stripping of natural gas and it is used for winter blending. So these are obtained on field. On field also we are recovering some gas fractions in uh, light ends like you know low grade petrol etc. So those are known as the natural petrol other than the gas fraction whatever the liquids do that you collect uh, on field during the uh, oil production in the oil fields. So that is known as the natural petrol. Refinery motor spirits produced by blending from various refinery conversion process to give correct octane number and other characteristics as per the requirement of the petrol as per the government norms, right? So what are these processes, etc. we are not going into the detail. We have seen in the flow chart when you take the low grade petrol, remove the sulphur and then you do the cracking then you can get the uh, different products including the high octane gasoline. High octane gasoline is also may not be suitable as per the government norms. So then you have to add appropriately blenders, additives, etc. and then make sure that you get correct octane number and then other characteristics required as per the government norms to use it as a motor spirit in vehicles. Solvent naphtha and kerosene are other fractions uh, that are possible in light ends. So previously these are used for the heating and solvents purpose. But nowadays they are also used for the jet fuels, reformat stock, etc. Other uh, fraction that is possible in the light ends is the light heating oils as well. Third one is the intermediate distillates. Under the intermediate distillates, we may have the heavy fuel oils, diesel oils, gas oil, and then fourth one is the heavy distillates where we can have the mineral oils, flotation and frothing oils waxes, lubricating oils, etc. And then under the residues, we may get the products like uh, 
lubricants under the residues in the sense when you do the fractionation or distillation of the petroleum crude whatever the residues that you get those residues you can take and do some kind of uh, processing as shown in the flow chart then you can get the lubricants you can get the fuel oil greases petrolactum asphalts road oils petroleum coke etc in addition as a byproducts you can get detergents ammonia etc when you do the fractionation or distillation of the petroleum crude you can also get the byproducts as detergents and ammonia some sulfur and derivatives may also get as a you know byproducts that's about the uh, petroleum crude refinery products now we are going to discuss about the characteristics of the refineries what do you mean by characteristics of the refineries means the amount of duty that refinery is doing based on that one these refineries are you know characterized as a primary intermediate and complex refinery in the primary refineries you primarily you, you have only uh, one particular distillation column and then you try to collect the you know lubricants and residues etc that you take one po portion and then remaining ones you may be sell to the other refineries for the further processing which is simplest one there is not much involvement technological involvement okay so those characteristics of a refineries we are going to see now may be grouped as below primary refinery simplest one consisting of only one distillation unit it produces residual asphalt and sell all of the other overhead to another refinery if you wanted to collect only residue so that uh, you produce lubricants greases waxes etc then you collect those uh, from the bottom of the distillation column whereas the other overheads whatever are there you can sell to the other refinery so that they can do the remaining of the extraction for the other products so such kind of refineries where you know only one distillation unit is there so that is known as the primary refinery intermediate refinery produces motor fuel distillate fuels and residuals it is typically found in european refineries where demand for petrol is low relative to the heating fluids whereas the complex refinery is the one that we just seen a few slides before and then we are showing it in the next slide as well so primarily these three characteristics of refineries are very common there is also a concept of a future refinery plans so for that purpose plans for next few years in terms of company location date due online and capacity details etc are to be properly planned so this is an example of a complex refinery which we have already discussed in detail uh, a few slides before okay so this is all about the uh, characteristics of the refineries now we are going to discuss about the uh, you know types of refinery design it is not the design of refinery types of refinery design so here we have independent and integrated so like characteristics you have primary intermediate and complex like that design also different types of designs are there independent and integrated independent in the sense you know hold up one unit to the other units you know hold up is uh, such a high that you know when you uh, stop operating one particular unit rest of the plant will not be affected such kind of things are there so those are known as the independent ones independent operations build with uh, holding capacities between units so that any unit could be operated shut down and reconditioned independently without affecting the operations being conducted in other units other units are of any of the refinery units okay maybe distillation maybe separation maybe finishing etc whatever it may be so holding capacities are made such a way that in these independent uh, operations or uh, independent uh, refinery designs okay so these are nowadays not used much they were very famous until early 1950s integrated operations integrated refinery can be built with 20 to 30 percent investment savings here it is designed with little hold up capacity between units since refinery maintenance requirements can be reliably scheduled accordingly now choice of crude petroleum also crude petroleum classification yesterday we have already discussed right 
Yesterday we have already discussed classification of the petroleum crude where we have uh, paraffin based crudes and then naphthene based crudes, intermediate based crudes, right. If that depends like you know selection depends on what kind of products are you planning to have in your plant. Let us say you are planning to have more lubricants, greases and waxes etc. then you should uh, select uh, naphthene based crudes in general. If you are planning to produce more light ends, uh, kerosene, solvent after etc., then you should go for uh, you know uh, paraffin based uh, intermediates. But if you wanted to have both of uh, all the all wide spectrum of the products, then better you go for a intermediate uh, based crude which will be having not only paraffin based as well as the naphthene based uh, components, both of them would be there in large quantities. So, refineries are in fact originally built to handle certain type of crude oil. Decision to handle other types of crude involves refinery changes. Obviously, when you do the designing of your refinery, then itself you have to decide what kind of products are you planning to have. Because in future after 5 or 10 years, if you wanted to produce some other products, then you may need to do several changes in the design in the refinery. Okay? So, for example, Venezuela crude has high salt and sulphur impurities, so they must be removed before start of uh, conventional refining. Likewise, Indian crude if you take, they are mostly naphthene based uh, crude, so they are suitable for primarily producing the lubricants, greases, waxes, etc. A large refinery may use several types of crudes and process them separately. Crude oils which produce superior distillate fuels may be separated from those that yield principally lubricating stocks and asphalts in general. Okay? Now we talk about the refinery processes. What do you mean by refinery process? It is a grouping of refinery process that we are going to discuss. Actually any plant whether it is a petroleum production plant, petrochemicals plant, polymerization plant or uh, you know rubber industry, detergent industry, any plant you take, what are the processes are involved? Basically unit operations and then unit uh, processes. Uh, some details of unit operations and unit processes we have already discussed at the beginning of the course, but here now we are discussing such unit operations and then unit processes specific to the uh, petroleum production industries and then petrochemicals industries. Right? So, Physical changes or unit operations and then chemical changes or unit processes are unavoidable in the refinery process which are very essential without them you cannot uh, get the wide spectrum of products as we have discussed in complex refinery flow chart. Typical physical changes or unit operations which are common in refinery process are listed here. So, these things we have already discussed in the first chapter of the course where we have discussed some details. Now, here we are going to see only what is the driving force and then for what purpose such kind of uh, unit operations are used in the refinery processes. Only these two points we are going to discuss now here. Okay? because much details are already discussed in the first chapter of the course. Even more details are required then you have to go for the specific course on uh, mechanical unit operations, mass transfer, heat transfer, etc. So, distillation is the most important uh, unit operation of any of the refinery, uh, petroleum refinery plant. In distillation, separation takes place based on the relative volatilities. It is most important of all refinery operations. Absorption is also based on relative volatilities and then it is used to scrub out high boiling fractions in low concentration gases. Actually in the complex uh, uh, refinery flow chart, the first atmospheric distillation is there, from there only all other coming, after that only the other rest of the things are coming. Like H2S etc. are there, your sulphur if you want to remove uh, in the form of H2S then scrubbing you do in general. So, these are coming after the distillation. So, distillation is very much important or the most important rather very much important. It is the most important unit operation of refinery plants. Next unit operation is extraction. It is based on relative solubility of a component in different solvents. 
primarily used in lube oils manufacture. Adsorption, the separation based on relative adherence to a surface of solids. Okay? It is primarily used for the color removal, separation of saturates from unsaturates in the refinery plants. Crystallization, it is based on the freezing point differences. Right? So, it is used in wax preparation in refinery plants. Heat transfer, energy conservation is primary design requirement with ample use of heat exchangers in general. So, different types of heat exchangers, reboilers, condensers, etc. are there. So, their design uh, one can go through if required. Fluid flow, different types of pumps, etc. are required not only for the single phase uh, fluid flow of liquids and gases in the refinery, but also two phase flow of gas liquid catalytic operations of moving bed and fluid is bed type, etc. So, those things are also we have discussed. Other unit operations may be there, but they are used to very less extent. Now, the chemical changes are unit processes, many of the unit processes associated with the refinery plants, not only associated with the refinery plants, but also in general to organic chemical technology we have seen in the first chapter of the course. So, but however, a uh, summary of uh, requirement of unit processes and other details are being discussed here with respect to the uh, petroleum refinery plants only. For example, depending on grade of crude, fraction of crude petroleum existing in petrol molecular range is only 25 to 40 percent in general right? when you do the refinery process. So, even the arrangement of these molecules is unsatisfactory for uh, current petrol requirements. Since current refinery output of high quality petrol may be as high as 50 percent in US, numerous conversion processes are used to accomplish this upgrading. In India, process conditions are set up to maximize kerosene diesel oil product yield and then reduce petrol yields because these diesel requirements are more compared to the petrol requirements. However, nowadays scenario is slightly changing, it is tending more towards the you know more petrol consumption than the diesel consumption. In addition, excess naphtha which accumulates is being converted by steam cracking to get the fertilizers and petrochemical starting chemicals, right? You know, use the naphtha as you know raw material to get different types of petrochemicals also, or you can do this steam cracking to get different types of fertilizers. Reforming and hydro dealkylation operations are used to produce primary aromatic chemicals such as benzene from uh, you know this naphtha, etc. That we have already seen. Now, we have a summary of refinery conversion processes. Until now what we have discussed? We have discussed the products of refinery processes. When you do the refinery process uh, onto a, a petroleum crude, what kind of products you get? Those details we have seen with flowchart and then characteristics of different types of uh, refineries we have seen. Then we have seen the processes that are involved in the refinery like unit operation and unit process etc. Now, we see uh, specific to refinery plant a summary of refinery conversion processes we are going to see like pyrolysis, cracking, polymerization, alkylation, hydro dealkylation etc. those things. Here we are giving only list like you know pyrolysis and cracking, reforming, polymerization, alkylation, isomerization, hydro dealkylation, hydrogenation and then impurities removal. In the previous lecture and then today's lecture several of these terminology we have used to get some kind of products or to explain some kind of topic. So, it is very essential to understand how does uh, these process, processes occur in general and then what are the reactions involved, what are the engineering problems, what are the appropriate flow charts etc. for these processes are need to be discussed. Those things we are going to discuss in the next lecture. References for today's lecture are presented here. Outlines of chemical technology by Dryden, edited and revised by Gopal Rao and Marshall, third edition. Chemical Process Industries by Austin and Shreve, 5th edition, Encyclopedia of Chemical Technology by Kirk and Atmar, 4th edition, 
Unit Processes in Organic Synthesis by Grogins, 5th edition. Thank you.